I saw a bunch of CC6 clears. I also saw some solo DPS clears. I thought, hey, how funny would it be if I cleared this with the blemish shine as a solo DPS? This was four months ago. Four months later, this CC came to global and I figured out how to beat Risk 18 with the solo DPS strat. It only took 14 hours of molding over the span of three days, but I was proud of the clear. But then I had one more very sinister thought. Wait. Risk 19 is totally doable. So on a lovely Saturday, I spent 10 hours molding over one extra risk. 95 attempts later, and here we are. Blemishine Solo DPS Risk 19. I want to analyze my own strat for this video, mainly to showcase it, but I also think it'd be a great learning experience for you guys too. Okay Blemishine, I've been watching you train for the past couple of days, and I think it's about time. You're gonna be the star of this solo DPS run. Nah, you'll be fine. You have an entire team to back you up. My theory crafting mainly consisted of choosing the best risk set, crunching some blummy DPS numbers with the risks and buffs, and figuring out skill rotations. I couldn't really do any actual testing on the map since I don't have a CN account, so after getting a few broad ideas, I just had to sit and wait. The thing about solo DPS is you have solo DPS. This means since you rely on a single operator as your main source of damage, you really need to focus on skill rotations and stalling to match that operator's damage. This is extremely significant for Blemishine because of her skills which all charge with defensive SP. She has her talent that makes her gain SP from attacking too, but the fact that she has to interact with enemies in order to gain SP means that if no enemies are around her, she's not going to charge her skills and I won't be ready for the next burst. I'm sure some of you may be confused at this part in my run when I didn't time Texas's skill to attack cancel the big croc for more stalling. The thing is, for solo DPS, you want all your enemies to come all at once when Blemishine skill is on, and you want all your enemies to be stalled when she's charging. If I attacked cancelled the big croc right there, he would show up later when Blemishine skill would have ran out, which is not good. Auk has some nice SP feeding for Blemishine with his third skill since he hits her 15 times, giving her 15 free SP. So this relieved the SP problem by a lot. If you didn't notice already, Blemishine only has one tile of range. This made my job a lot easier because now there is only one tile on the map that makes this entire strategy possible. This one. The issue is now I had to deal with the blue box anxiety. I saw a lot of comments about clenching certain parts of their body when watching my clear, and I too got a lot of anxiety from it when doing the first few runs, but as I did more runs, the anxiety feeling went away because I was confident enough in Blemishine's damage to kill the Duelist Crux in time. Originally, I planned my setup to be something like this, since Whistlash provides a very big attack speed and defense buff to operators with 3 block with her S1, but I had to remove Whistlash and adjust my Warfarin positioning to this so that Warfarin could feed Blemishine SP because skill rotations were more of a problem than damage, so that was a waste of mats. Since Whistlash was useless, I traded her for Nightingale to relieve the Croc Caster's art damage. I also originally planned on using Phantom S3 from our crowd control, but after figuring out the Brawler Crocs were silenceable, I swapped to Waifu S2 since she silences the enemies around her when she's deployed. A big part of this strategy relies on Blemishine being able to tank Auk, and if her defense was paper thin from the Brawlers, she'd die from the Auk shots and that'd end the run. Being able to silence the Brawler Crocs also allowed Blummy to get more SP since they have a fast attack interval and basically become harmless when silenced. Arknight's Silence has always been a not so useful underhanded mechanic since they never tell you which enemies can be silenced, but this strategy relies on it to keep Blummishine alive. As for damage, Auk and Warfarin buff Blummishine so that she deals big damage to the Duelist Crocs. Elysium slows and lowers her defense and Sculptor makes sure Blemishine gets more defense and damage. What really made this strategy was Blemishine's second talent though. The fact that she can attack sleeping enemies means I'm able to use Kafka to stall and get damage in at the same time. Blemishine is the only operator that can attack sleeping enemies and she even prioritizes them and gets damage amplification from it. If I tried doing this with let's say Silver Ash for example, the Kafka sleeping would be useless since he can't attack the slumbered enemies. 
Melee operators will usually prioritize damaging the enemy they're blocking, but since Blemishine has this talent, she will focus on slapping the Duelist Crocs instead. Even though Blemishine is blocking a brawler right here, she still attacks the Duelist Croc. You can see in this clip how Auk and Blemishine swap targets because of Kafka's sleep, which I thought was pretty interesting. Speaking of sleep, let's talk about the weird mechanics that come with it. You see, Blemishine can attack blocked enemies because her block hitbox coincides with the enemy hitbox when they collide. Simple, right? But let's say she is blocking an enemy behind her, and I put that enemy to sleep. The enemy will go back to their unblocked hitbox, which is literally just a dot, and she won't attack anything. I love the sleep mechanic. Another quirky thing about sleep is that you can't debuff enemies during sleep since they are untargetable, but you can also work around this. If you watch the clear closely, you notice that I apply Elysium's debuff before I use Kafka. Applying debuffs before putting enemies to sleep works, but applying it after doesn't. Okay, Blumashine, the enemy is right there. Show me your best swing. You... you missed. How'd you miss? He's, he's literally standing still. What? He is a stationary target. How are you missing? What do you mean he's a blur? He's standing still. Now that all this operator stuff is out of the way, let's get to the real Maldi bits of the clear. You like RNG? Well, there's heavy amounts of it. When I first came up with the clear, I thought, Dealing with infiltrators won't be that bad. Blemishine deals two hits with her S3, one physical, and one arts, so even if they dodge one hit, the other one should land because she should have enough damage to kill them. Even if she misses the first few hits, I have fast redeploy stallers to get more damage in. And then you get clips like this. Or clips like this. Bagpipe hits three times per attack, and she does two attacks. This meant this dumb stupid f hologram dodged six times in a row. What are the chances of this happening? 0.4%. So whatever HG employee decided to give enemies dodge and put them in a CC, be careful of icy roads on December 7th. There was this part of my run, which was totally intentional by the way. I totally let that duelist croc live with 2 HP so he could give SP to Blemishine for the final two duelist crocs. Totally. And I totally planned those awk RNG stun shots too so that Blemishine wouldn't die. All calculated. However, these two problems pale in comparison to the most awful thing I've ever experienced. This problem is the hardest thing I've figured out in the entirety of my Arknights career. You see, the difference between Risk 18 and Risk 19 is one risk. Just one. Enemy attack up two. With this tag, I have to somehow get Nightingale much earlier at the end because the Caster Crocs at the end will ruin my entire setup. This means I drop her down at this part, place her cage, and retreat her for the part where three caster crocs are out in order to release some of the arts damage pressure. The issue is that the cage doesn't last long enough. Since Warfarin is the last deployed operator, two of the caster crocs will attack her. Warfarin can survive two hits from the caster with enemy attack up one, but she can only survive one with enemy attack up two. Remember that part about Blemishine's S3? You know, the part where she has the highest heal per second in the game? Yeah, this part of the run relies on that. You'd think that the problem would be solved because of this, but no no, this is just the beginning. You see, the caster crocs will still kill Warfarin since their attack interval is close together. This means I need to sandwich Blemishine's attack interval between two of the caster crocs like this. Simple, right? No, this part was pure agony, because the attack interval of the caster croc doesn't divide evenly into Blemishine's attack interval. What that means is if I wasn't frame perfect, this would happen. Or this. Or this. How did I solve this problem, you ask? Good question. I deploy Nightingale to deploy her cage at this exact moment. The cage lasts long enough to where this top caster gets an attack, but it disappears before the bottom one does. Since the bottom caster loses his initial target, he has to restart his entire casting animation again, dividing the time I had to sandwich Blemishine's attack interval more evenly. At the exact moment when his staff reaches its lowest point for the second time during his animation, I press Blemishine's third skill. This timing took me 10 hours to figure out, by the way. This is what I spent the entire day molding over. Wow, that was fast. I guess that's what happens when you sign up for Angelina Express. Who the hell are you? Uh-oh. 
Hey man, we can talk this out. You have just one too many your mom jokes. Just chill out, dude. Thanks, Blummy. Saved my skin. The last thing I learned this CC was managing my mental state. I know it sounds super cliche and basic that if you're angry at a video game, you should take a break, but this CC is when I actually experienced that. I noticed that the more angry I got, the more impatient and greedier I became, and that would screw up my timing because I would forget a specific part of my run. I noticed that my runs would dramatically get worse after 2 or 3 hours, so I would take an hour or 30 minute break to refresh my mental. When I showed the progress of my runs to the Fang, he told me to just not take the HP seal tag and leak the duelist crocs, but do I look like a coward to you? Also, the clear would have looked way less cool if I leaked crocs. I think a lot of players when introduced to CC or any hard content in general want to get it done and over with. These stages require lots of thought, and being impatient with your strategy will only make your progress slower. I can definitely say that this is the most fun I've ever had in CC ever. Seeing a strategy that you planned actually take shape and come alive is one of the greatest feelings ever, and even if there are a lot of mistakes in my original theory crafted strat, figuring how to work around it was extremely rewarding. When it comes to contingency contract, a lot of people look up clears for high risk and then copy the clear, but this CC really gave me a taste of how enjoyable creating your own strat is, no matter how stupid. Even if it's risk 19, which is relatively low for my standards, I'm still proud of the fact that I made something that looked impossible work. Let's go! Oh!